In this video, we're going to learn how to make generator expressions in Python. Now we're actually going to start by just talking about what generators are. Generators are a special type of construction in Python that are somewhat similar to lists in that they can allow you to loop over a sequence of objects. But unlike lists where you end up creating and storing a bunch of values in memory, generators only generate the next item in a sequence and don't actually store anything in memory. So this means generators can be a good thing to use if you're just interested in looping over some values, but you don't actually need to store those values in any persistent way. So if you want to create a generator expression, it's very similar to a list comprehension. It's almost exactly the same in construction, actually. It's just that instead of using square brackets like you would with a list comprehension, you use the parands to make the comprehension, but you put the same logic inside. So we'll give an example of what that would look like. First, we're going to do a normal list comprehension. So this is just going to generate values between 0 and 10. So with a list comprehension, we'd say x for x in this range, and that will actually create a list with all these values and store it in memory. But then we're going to make a generator version of the same thing. And you can see that the actual logic, x for x in range 0 to 10, is exactly the same as the list comprehension version. We've just changed the closing characters to these parands. So when we run this, you can see that the list created all the values and actually printed out the entire list. But when we printed out the generator, it printed out this weird thing, generator object at some memory address. So with the generator, it didn't actually create any of the values yet. It created a generator object. If we want to actually get values from this generator object, we can use the next function. So I'll show an example of that. We say next, and then in the function call, we pass in the generator we want to get the next item from. So if we say next my generator, it's going to get us or generate the first item in that sequence. So we can see here that should be a zero. So if we run this, we'll get that next item, which is zero. So this is a simple example of how generators use lazy evaluation. It basically means that the generator isn't actually going to run the code necessary to generate any values until you actually go and ask it to give you something. And when you ask for the next thing, then the generator will actually run whatever logic is necessary to produce that next item. So if your generator is computationally expensive for some reason, it might be a good thing to not actually generate all the values right away because you might not want to do all that computation up front. Now note that if we call this next my generator construction again, it will generate the next item in the sequence. So if we run it again, we'll, we'll not get zero, we'll get what the next item is. So you see that time we got one. And if we run it again, we'll get a two, etc. And every time we call it, it'll generate the next item. Another way to get other items in the sequence is you can use a for loop. For item left in my generator, print that item left. Now we've already generated some values from the generator. We did 0, 1, 2. So if we run this for loop, 0, 1, 2 is not going to be repeated because we already generated those. Let's run this and now we just got 3 through 9. Those were all the remaining values in the generator. And once they've all been generated, the generator is spent or exhausted. So there's no items left and if you try to generate from it, you won't get anything. Let's try it. We'll say next my generator after we've used the whole thing up and we get an error because the generator has used up all of its values. If we wanted to run through all the values again, we'd have to resave a brand new generator and do it again. So when would you want to actually use generators? Well, there's a few reasons you might want to use it. One is if you're going to generate a large sequence and you don't want to have to store it all in memory. Another reason is when you don't know how many results you're actually going to need. When you're doing something like a for loop list comprehension, you actually end up saving every single result. But with a generator, you wouldn't have to go through the whole thing. You could stop short at some point. Now, one other important thing to note about generators is you can actually convert normal Python functions into something that yields generators. And to do that, you need to use this special yield keyword. 
And that is a way to make more complex generators that perhaps carry out more computation and do more different steps than you can do in the more simplistic generator expression construction we showed in this video. So if you're interested in how to use the yield keyword and make more complicated generators within functions, check out the yield video. I will leave a link to that in the description below and on the end screen. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like or hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.